welcome everyone uh, for today's seminar. Our speaker is Takabichi Iguchi from the University of Maryland, and he works jointly also at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And so Dr. Iguchi uh, did his undergraduate and graduate studies in meteorology uh, at the University of Tokyo. And his doctoral thesis was about uh, uh, introducing or studying aerosol interactions in cloud microphysics. And after his PhD, he was a postdoctoral associate at the Climate uh, System Research Center at the University of Tokyo, where he, uh, at that time, he introduced spectral binning in the weather model of the uh, Japan uh, Meteorological Agency. And and he has many made many interesting applications of the effect of spectral winning, and he's going to talk to us about some of them today. So let us welcome Dr. Iguchi. Thank you. Thank you. and thank you for coming. When I was in Japan, I mostly focused on the aerosol and the cloud interaction using a cloud resolving model. And after coming to US, I was involved in the global precision measurement mission of NASA. And this study of surface precision microphysical analysis is a kind of new challenge for me. And the title is WAP SBM simulation for the two distinct modes in one day rainfall event during MC3. And the all sites, I mostly in charge of the model simulation and its analysis. And Toshi Matsui is a developer of Goddard Satellite Data Simulator Unit and the Synthetic GPM Simulator. And Ari Toke is a professor of ground based distrometer measurement. And Pablo Scoras is a PI of the AMSGP site radar measurement. And Wade Kotao is the top of our mesoscale modeling group in NASA Goddard. And this research is supported by NASA PMM and MAP missions and conducted under the collaboration with USDOE and uh, NASA MC3 field campaign. Okay. The motivation of this study is precipitation is a key component of Earth en energy and water cycles, and various processes such as aerosol loading, paper availability, window velocity structure and the temperature structures are responsible for determining the characteristics. And precipitation at the ground level is very important for human life. For, for example, people need to bring an umbrella in rainy days and important for the agricultural activity and food production and sometimes causes a severe uh, some disasters like flash flood. And the more scientific side, for satellite rainfall measurement like TRIM and GPM missions, the microphysics of precipitation is very important for the accurate estimation of surface precipitation amount by their retrieval algorithms. Because some assumption of precipitation microphysics is needed in this calculation of algorithms to connect the measured signals and the result of the algorithms like surface precipitation amount. And for atmospheric modeling side, surface precipitation is also an important target for improving the short time weather forecasting as well as validating the cloud physics. It also related to the cloud radiative property, uh, excuse me, properties and interaction with dynamics. And the starting point of this study is 
an unique uh, microphysical structure of surface rainfall was observed in one day reflectation event during MC3 field campaign at atmospheric radiation measurement Southgate to plain site. And following the questions, can we reproduce this structure using an up-to-date cloud model? And how can we present an explanation of the mechanisms forming this characteristic from the simulation result? And MC3, uh, excuse me, uh, MSET site and MC3 field campaign. This MSET site is located at the north central Oklahoma. And this site was the first measurement site of USDOE atmospheric radiation measurement program. And the first instrument was deployed in 1992. And the additional instrument and data processing system has been incrementally added in the succeeding years. And this location of the North Central Oklahoma was selected for this site for several reasons. Relatively homogeneous geography and easy accessibility and wide variability of climate cloud types and surface flux properties, as well as the wide variability of seasonal te temperature variability and sp specific humidities. And this MC3 field campaign was conducted during the April and May 2011 around this, around this MSGP site. And this MC3 ideal scenario is capturing the life cycle of storm and convective systems. And research aircraft flies above and within the cloud, while radar systems scanning the storm uh, from the multiple locations. At the same time, additional ground-based instruments measure the surface precipitation and wind speed in addition to the basic measurement at the MHGP site. And this figure shows the synoptic weather and climate condition around this central area of the US. <coughs> and this central area from Texas to Minnesota is sometimes called, uh, called uh, as tornado alley because of high frequency of severe weather like tornadoes. And three types of air mass are effective to form this uh, cloud and, uh, sorry, weather and climate conditions over this area. One is a warm moist air from the Gulf Coast area, and this moist air provides uh, humidity to, uh, that is needed to develop the convective system with intensive precipitation. And uh, other two is a uh, warm dry air from the southern part of the mountain area and cold dry air from the northern part of the mountain area. And in general, uh, by the interaction of these three types of air mass, the uh, frontal activity and the convective systems are very active over this region. And this characteristic boundary between the dry air and the moist air is often called as a dry line and is a factor to rapid development of the convective systems over this area. And one day rainfall event was observed at the MSEP site on 25th April 2011. And this event con uh, consisted with deep convective system and the shallow boundary layer clouds. And this first figure shows the K-band dense radar at the MSG, MSGP site in the form of the insect filtered reflectivity distribution by this color shaded and cloud base estimated by seriometer by this black dots. And the second figure shows the time series of the rainfall rate measured by the collocated percival distrometer 
on the this side. And you can see a series of deep convective systems passed over this site from about 9 UTC to 11 UTC with a cloud top height up to 10 km. And high rainfall rate, more than 40 mm per hour, was measured by this possible visometer at this time. At other time period, a series of shallow boundary layer clouds continuously observed with a cloud top height approximately less than 2 km observed by this radar and small rainfall rate less than approximately 1 mm per hour were measured by this possible disrometer intermittently for this time period. And in order to investigate the microphysics structure of this one-day rainfall event, we analyze the measurement result of this possible optical disometers. And this is a picture of the possible optical disometer instrument. And 16 units of this instrument were deployed around this MSGP site. And the principle of the measurement is there is a laser beam between this, uh, this part of the instrument and the falling particles are scanned by this laser beam and the particle size and particle fall, fall velocity and the number of particles for certain time period, certain time observe, uh, certain time intervals are measured by this possible disometer. And by summarizing these three types of results, we can obtain the 32 size beam particle size distribution spectra. But this particle disometer has a low capability for detecting the smaller particles. And in general, this possible disometer it's covering the size range of the diameter ranging 0 to 26.78 millimeter. <laughs> but the particle diameter less than 0 0.26 millimeter is cut off in the analysis. And we should be careful at the still diameter less than 0 0.77 millimeter as possible underestimation of number concentration remains. And by by the integration of this particle size distribution spectra, we can obtain the following bulk rainfall parameters like rainfall rate, total number of droplet concentration, and reflectivity in daily regime. And this reflectivity can be directly compared to the weather precipitation data measurement. And bulk effective droplet radius. This effective drop radius is the first choice of to represent the size information measured by the remotely sensed measurement because the definition is the ratio of volume to cross-section cross areas of the particle groups so easily to be compared to the remotely sensed measurement. And this is a result of the microphysical measurement of by the possible disometer on April 25, 2011. And in the form of the scattering diagrams of the correlations between the uh, droplet number concentration and rainfall rate, and correlation between the bulk effective droplet radius and rainfall rate. And the samples are color coded according to the approximate timing of the passage of this deep convective system by blue color and shallow boundary layer colors by the red colors. And you can see the these uh, two color groups are recognized as two distinct modes of the surface precipitation microphysics measured by these possible disorders. 
and the blue color groups is characterized by the, this large bulk effective radius and large rainfall rate. And in contrast, this red color groups is characterized by small bulk effective radius group and small rainfall rate. And as for the number concentration, the red color groups has much more smaller number concentration, but maximums of these two color groups is not so different, even though the uh, rainfall rate are quite different between these two color groups. And this two distinct mode is not caused by the some instrumental bias of this possible measurement because uh, we have uh, other types of distrometer measurement by 2 dpd distrometer measurement. And the measurements show the similar two distinct mode of the microphysical structure for the same rainfall event. Okay, let me move on to the model simulation side. And we use this work model coupled with spectral beam microphysics. It will be, uh, that is used for the analysis of this presentation event. And the main framework is WAF model. And WAF model is a three-dimensional mesoscale modeling system developed by mainly uh, by NCAR and with the collaboration with other institutes in India. With uh, many, uh, many types of options for basic physical processes. And it has a pre-processing system for the numerical weather prediction simulation. And in general, bulk cloud microphysics is used in this work model. And we implemented spectral beam microphysics from Hebra University cloud model into this work model system. And this SBM has a detailed microphysics with an explicit, uh, explicit prediction of particle size distribution with uh, many types of the microphysical calculation, such as nucleation, nucleation process from condensation nuclei. And the coupled model, we called it WAP SBM. And the difference between the bulk cloud microphysics and the spectral beam microphysics is the different numerical representation of cloud particle size distribution. This is a cloud, and this cloud has a various, various size particles inside. And in the numerical approach in the model, we firstly arrange these various size particles into the form of the particle size distribution, like this. And this particle size distribution is very important for determining the calculation of the cloud microphysical processes, and it also determining the cloud radiative properties and the interaction with dynamics through an extent of the radiant heating. And in general, there are two major methods to represent this particle size distribution in the atmospheric models. One is a bulk microphysics, and this particle size distribution is approximated by some empirical built-in functions, like this. And this method is simple and popular and least computational. So this method is most commonly used in general circulation models and most of the regional models. And another is a spectral beam microphysics. And this PSD is approximated discreetly on a number of size beams, like in this figure. And this better representation of the form of the particle size distribution is important for this study of the 
surface microphysics, uh, surface precession microphysics analysis. And this method is detailed, but computation is much more expensive as compared with uh, bulk microphysics. And this is a very severe pro uh, problem for user for me, uh, like me. Okay. And experiment design of this Warplex DM simulation for the MC3 one day case. And the WAF ARW version 3.1.1 coupled with the spectral field microphysics of Hebrew University Cloud model. And 24 hours real time forecasting was conducted for this 25th April 2011 case. With the following physical options, when I am analogic level 2.5 turbulent closure model for PVF, and no around surface model and Goddard radiation package for both long wave and short wave radiations. And NCEP North American mesoscale model dataset with horizontal grid spacing of 12 kilometers is used to build the initial and boundary conditions of this simulation. And we set three domains for the nesting simulation. And the first domain is a uh, uh, horizontal grid spacing is nine kilometer, and for second three kilometer, and the third is a uh, one kilometer. And this third domain is the main target of the analysis, and including the location of the arm SGP site. And the nesting configuration is domain one is firstly individually simulated using a bulk cloud microphysics with a subgrid cumulus parameterization. After that, domain two and domain three are simulated at the same time using a spectral beam microphysics without a subgrid cumulus parameterization under the online way nesting. And one way nesting to is used to connect the domain one result and uh, lateral boundary condition of the domain two. Okay, let me start to the showing the model simulation result. And the first figure is uh, previously shown the data measurement result at the MHCB site in the form of the vertical distribution of the K band uh, radar reflectivity. And the second figure shows the K band reflectivity time height indicator derived from the work SBM simulation coupled with the Goddard satellite delta simulator unit. And you can see uh, this simulation generally the result is in good agreement with the radar measurement result in terms of the deep convective system and shallow boundary layer cloud, and the timing and the cloud top height. Except for the, this first three hours, but this should be excluded in the analysis as a spin after. And uh, the simulation has a slight, uh, the simulated deep convective system is slightly biased to early time, probably because of the, some deployment error of the forecasting. And this clear uh, sharp structure of this deep convective system is not resolved in the simulation, but probably this is uh, because of the, now the simulation output is the interval of the output is per one hour. So this is not uh, enough interval to represent this sharp structure of this deep convective system. But general agreement uh, is good. I'd like to say this, yeah. And uh, next is a very important uh, for the comparison result between the first value distributor measurement and WAF-SBM simulation 
in terms of the surface presentation microphysics at the RMSP site in the form of the scattering diagrams of correlations between droplet number concentration and rainfall rate and correlation between the vertical, uh, excuse me, bulk effective droplet radius and rainfall rate. And in order to, the, in order to calculate the, this rainfall rate from the simulation, we firstly calculated uh, the surface droplet size distribution with 32 size bins that are equi equi excuse me, equivalent with the actual possible measurement from the 43 size bins of the PSDs from the model simulation. And after that, we, uh, these parameters are calculated using the same equation and the same manner that is also equi equivalent to the calculation of the <coughs> parameters in the actual possible measurement. And this approach enabled to a straightforward comparison between the measurement and simulation. Even though the some uncertainty uh, of the sampling timing and the location still remained. And uh, in the simulation, a domain of 20 kilometers square on the RMSCP site was sampled to probe this Z plot. The area is almost equivalent, uh, equivalent of the covered area by the 16 units of the possible measurement. And from these figures, uh, you can see uh, the simulation can represent the two distinct modes uh, uh, by these two color modes that uh, that are correspond to the approximate timing of the deep convective system and the shallow boundary layer clouds. And these uh, two distinct mode is also characterized, characterized by the large effective droplet radius and the large rainfall rate. And the red color group is characterized by large bulk effective radius and large rainfall rate in the simulation plot. And also the branch of, of blue color groups from the red color groups. And these are correspond reasonably well with the dots in the simulation plot. But one problem is the, the model simulation overestimated the value of the bulk effective radius. These are slightly scattered from the, this part, especially in the rainfall range less than one millimeter per hour. And we investigate the risk. And this upper figure shows the same figure about the number concentration and rainfall rate, but with different, uh, different scale of the vertical axis. And you can see a clear difference between the measurement and the simulation plot. Only the simulation plot has a group with very small number concentration, less than one per cubic meters. And we, spe we speculated the reason of this difference. Why is there on the side of the measurement? The first bar measurement might capture these groups uh, with very small number concentration, but probably this measurement program disregarded these groups as a noise. And another problem is the model simulation side. A spontaneous breakup, that a natural breakup without particle collisions, is not considered in the present spectral beam microphysics. And these particles so that some huge raindrops after the melting of huge ice particles like hailstones uh, artificially fall to the ground and sampled only in the simulation. And if these 
sample groups with very small number concentration is filtered out. The profile of the simulation plot became in better agreement with that in the measurement plot. And now we have confirmed that the model, work model work SVM simulation can represent the two distinct modes of the surface presentation microphysics measured by the Pascal disometers. And now I start to the discussion about the surface presentation microphysics and weather and cloud conditions on the day by referring to the three-dimensional field of the work SVM simulation. And these upper figures show the simulation result of the horizontal distribution of surface presentation effective droplet radius at 9 UTC and 20 of 1 UTC. And the lower figures show the horizontal distribution of cloud top temperature simulated by the warp SPM simulation also at 9 UTC and 21 UTC on the day. And very low cloud top temperature, less than 50 degrees Celsius, covered with the location of the MSGT site. And uh, no, no eastern segment of the domain. And this is a deep convective system as measured in the K band dense radar at the MSGT site. And in the west, uh, southwestern domain, uh, southwestern segment of the domain is covered with the shallow warm cloud. The cloud top temperature warmer than zero, de uh, zero degrees Celsius. And at 21 UTC, the northeastern segment of the domain is, cap uh, is covered with patchy shallow warm cloud the cloud top temperature warmer than zero degree C. As shown, uh, that is correspond to the measurement result of the, uh, of the radar measurement at the MSGT site. And from the comparison between the upper and lower figures, you can see the clear correlation between the surface precipitation bulk effective droplet radius and the cloud top temperature. And this clear correlation between surface rain drop sites and the cloud top temperature is caused by the difference of updraft velocities in the cloud systems causing the precipitations. For, uh, for example, a shallow boundary layer cloud has small updraft velocity so liquid particles fall to the ground before enough growth and become the huge raindrops in the cloud. In contrast, deep convective systems has very large updraft velocity. So ice particles enough will gross over the updraft region. And finally fall to the ground and melt and become a huge raindrops at the surface. And this mechanism uh, by the difference of the updraft velocity between the deep convective system and shallow boundary layer cloud is a factor to form the two distinct modes of the surface presentation microphysics on this rainfall event. And these figures show the vertical sounding data captured by the Bayern zoning system at the MSGT site at 9 UTC and 20 UTC. And there are two important features that are common between these timings. 
and also related to the forming of the cloud and PlayStation systems on this day. One is a capping inversion of temperature under the level of the zero degree C with humid boundary layer at low, lower level so that a shallow boundary layer cloud is most likely formed under this condition with limiting the development of the deep convective system through this camping inversion of temperature. However, there is a cold deep layer with conditional instability in the free atmospheric layers so that when once a strong convection is triggered through this uh, capping inversion of temperature, a strong a deep convective system is tend to easily develop under these conditions. And this figure illustrates the thermodynamics field in the simulation on 850 hectopascal pressure level at 9 UTC. That is the timing of the deep convective system and the atmosphere uh, site around here in the form of the vapor distribution by this color shaded and the temperature distribution by the color contour lines and the horizontal wind anomaly by the vectors. And there are two major, major flow over this domain at this time. One is a warm and moist air from the southern part, and another is a cold and dry air from the northern part. And the part of these two major flow are converged on the location of the deep convective system and MSDP site. And this conversion and poorly together with balconic instability are the factor to develop the deep convective system around this location and with breaking up the capping inversion of the temperature at lower layers. Okay. I'm sorry, how, how was the wind anomaly calculated? Uh, this is uh, just the uh, difference from the domain average the value over this domain. Okay. So you mean the, this vector, uh, point? I mean, in reality, the, the real objection is the, the total wind. The anomaly is not really what is back. The synoptic background wind is from southwestern to northeast. North north yeah, but the, yeah, I'd like to show the, just the anomaly to highlight this. Um, flow of the warm moist air and uh, cold dry air. And the system uh, is generally move on to the direction of the northeast. And uh, these two plots show the north-south cross section. Of, on the side of the deep convective system and the shallow boundary layer cloud site at this time in the form of the total cloud water ice content by the color shaded and the wind by vectors. And on the side of the deep convective system, moist cell convection are induced with some mesoscale feedback processes and uh, for example, from the airflow from the southern part collide with the opposite, uh, opposite direction wind at the lower level and rise up to the higher level 
and diverge to the at the top of the deep convective system. In contrast, uh, I'm sorry, and on this side, a capping inversion of temperature is broken by the uh, activity of the wind at a lower level. At, at a lower level. At a lower level. In contrast, on the side of the shallow boundary layer cloud, the shallow boundary layer clouds are formed by the turbulence driven by the strong wind vertical shear around, the grand, uh, around the, this ground level. And this turbulence is driven by, uh, driven by the wind shear is an important factor to maintain the well mixed boundary layer and condensation in place of the radiative heating in data because this is a night time of the, this local. So, and on this side, a deep convective system is not developed, probably because of no convergence and no volcanic instability on this side with breaking up of the temperature, uh, I'm sorry, camping inversion of temperature and uh, involvement in the condition, free atmosphere with condition instability. Okay, uh, let me move on some extra content about the relationship with, uh, of this research activity and the global prestation measurement mission. And this global prestation measurement mission, GPM, is the next generation satellite rainfall measurement mission after the trim measurement that is still under operational in succeeding uh, 15 years after the launch. And this GPM co-satellite will be launched in coming February. And this movie shows the state of the measurement by the GPM core satellite and the constellation satellite that is uh, covering with almost uh, a surface every three hours for the rainfall measurement. And this GPM core satellite has a dual frequency prestation radar with K band and K band and multi channels of uh, bright, uh, microwave imager to measure the brightness temperature distribution. And this GPM mission will extend their measurement, rainfall measurement to much higher latitude, that is uh, 38 degrees north and south of the present trim mission to 65 degrees north and south of the new GPM mission. So the PlayStation scenes at middle and high latitude, including the, some light PlayStation and ice PlayStation, like snowfall, are important target for this new mission by GPM. And our research activity is involved in this synthetic GPM simulator project. And this activity of the synthetic GPM simulator project is summarized in this BAMS paper that will be published in coming November. And this figure shows the framework of the synthetic GPM simulator. And we had uh, some GPM ground variation field measurement campaign, like MC3E. And the measurement result, like particle density and the particle size distribution, particle fall velocity, that, that is the microphysical information, will be provided this satellite algorithm development scientist to support their build the some assumption of the PlayStation microphysics in their retrieval algorithms. In addition to this process, 
the cloud system reserving model, like work SBM, will provide the simulation result on the cloud, reser cloud reserving model database to the algorithm development. And this cloud reserving model is constrained with the measurement data from the ground validation site in terms of the microphysics and macrophysics of the observed uh, presentation scenes. And at the same time, the GPM orbital test bed is also provided to the algorithm development from the satellite simulator. And this orbital test bed is created by the cloud reserving model database through the forward cal calculation of the satellite data simulator unit. And what is this orbital, uh, GPM orbital test bed? It's, and how this orbital database is used for supporting the building the uh, satellite retrieval algorithms. This GPM orbital database is, in other words, virtual GPM measurement for the simulation field by the cloud system resolving model, like WAP SV. And these figures show the GPM measurement profile by the some the uh, presentation radar reflectivity and brightness temperature distribution by the microwave Im imager by the GPM core satellite for the presentation scenes over the each GPM ground validation site from the C3 BP FX, also MC3 and HMT and PLPIs. But uh, the GPM core satellite has not been launched yet. So this is uh, just a simulation result by the satellite data simulator unit for the simulation field of the cloud system driving model. But, but this is just a simulation result, but satellite retrieval algorithms can be applied to create the, their some uh, estimation of uh, for example, surface rainfall amount or something. And the scientist of the development of the satellite retrieval algorithms can be checked their retrieval algorithm performance by using, using these two types of the database. One is the orbital database, and another is the orbital simulation result by the cloud system resolving model as a question and answer. For example, the rainfall amount estimation from the retrieval algorithms can be validated by the original result of the simulation result. And so the scientists for of the development uh, developing the retrieval algorithms. So uh, can easily check their capability by using this database. Okay, the summary of this pre uh, presentation is, in one day for scene at MSGP site, first validation meter measurement show characteristic rainfall structures that can be classified into two groups mostly according to the types of cloud cause meter presentations. And work SVM simulation could successfully reproduce the rainfall microphysics characterized and characterized by the two distinct mode. And the discussion on the observed surface rainfall microphysics can be expanded to relevance to the weather and the cloud conditions on the day by referring to the three-dimensional atmospheric field in the simulation. In addition to that, the three-dimensional output of the work SV 
is provided to the MC3 and GPM science communities to support their researches, for example, for testing and developing the satellite flotation retrieval algorithms, as in the synthetic GPM simulator. Okay. Doctor, thank you so much. Do you also uh, do you also have a uh, spectral approach to ice microphysics? Yes, sure. So is it separate for snow, gravel particle, or it's... Uh, no, let me show some extra slide. Yeah, so you can see the particles categories and the beans in the spectral beam microphysics. And the uh, hydrometer particles are categorized into one quarter and uh, six types, and three types of ice crystals, dendrite plate columns, and the snow aggregate gravel and hair. And these particle size distribution are resolved in 43 bits for each hydrometer scatter. So have you compared it to, to, did you use this results to improve conventional bulk microphysics? Say? Uh, I mostly conduct the only uh, work spectral beam microphysics simulation. But uh, some researchers uh, use this SBM result to include in the bulk microphysics result. And, uh, some tune up for the parameters in the parameterization in the bulk microphysics. There is a question here from Ping. Yes, no, so uh, actually, why is about speed map problem? The speed map. Uh -huh. In the beginning, you have convection uh, in your models. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, well, it would be interesting to know why would that occur? So this one, right? Yeah, right. Uh, actually, I, I don't analyze this spin up time, but I think uh, usually first two, three, or six hours in the weather forecasting, uh, the results should be excluded before the summer. Uh, just uh, by the start of the forecasting uh, summer, Artificial convection are uh, formed sometimes. So I'm sorry, I didn't uh, okay. analyze that detail. Okay, second one also on this plot, uh -huh. we see that in the upper panel, we see near 20, we, we see some some signals or or tiles near 5 p.m. Yeah. Are we gonna see that in your simulation? Uh, what could be the, the reason for that? We need that one in your model. I think. I didn't check the horizontal profile of around these times, but probably this kind of uh, isolated, very not, not so large convective system, the, it's difficult to resolve the in the simulation. And yeah, yeah that should be, I think, so not, small event, you will yeah. see them in the rain the horizontal resolution is now one kilometer, but I think it's still not enough to this kind of very small isolated convection system. So that is another Yeah, you emphasize a lot how that the initial droplet size distribution should be well represented, and you used your spectral bin. And I have a question, what is your starting droplet size distribution? From where do you get that? Because it's broadness where well, or it's Characteristics were quite defined, the coagulation process, and everything is going on in terms of precipitation process. So, from where do you get the starting data? Yeah, just, just uh, explicit 
calculation of the condensation growth and the uh, collision and coagulation growth. So just a start from the nucleation from the condensation nuclei. Okay. That is uh, also activated as a CCN. And uh, from the uh, small particles to uh, grow up to by condensation growth and uh, so your Wolf model has a specific set of CCNs included, and you let those grow under these observed conditions. That is then your starting set? Yeah, but now the treatment is very simple. <coughs> this spectrum in microphysics has uh, certain means for the condensation nuclei. But uh, we don't assume the many kind of the aerosol species in into this uh, in the, this model, and there are them uh, cause uh, much more computational cost, and uh, so now just a simple treatment. But uh, most of the bulk cloud, bulk cloud microphysics uh, do not include. Uh, uh, this process, so uh, this SVM is uh, relatively better treatment than those models. Yes, Brian. So uh, you, you emphasize the importance of these SVMs for the retrieval algorithm development. Uh, do, do you really think that these uh, the SVMs are good enough for this? I, I mean, based on your results, uh, you, you it seemed like there was a lot of scatter Yes, the I mean, made some argument that you know there may be some uh, cutoffs and so forth issues, but in general, it looked it wasn't clear to me that that it really knew what was going on in terms of that separation, especially if you actually really binned it up, uh, and and, that, and then you only emphasize the warm rain part, and then as Marat mentioned, there's all the ice above, and so I. Um, so is there other is there other evidence to suggest that you know, these have, you can use these to really home in on the retrievals? Uh, I mean, is it, uh, is it going to be good enough, do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd like to make the comment. Uh, in the trim era uh, for, I think, 15 years ago, uh, we, we have uh, the same similar approach to development uh, uh, supporting the uh, satellite retrieval algorithm. But, uh, at that, uh, at that time, we used the uh, bulk cloud microphysics for the making the database. So now we, uh, we use the uh, spectral beam microphysics in place of the bulk cloud microphysics. And uh, this spectral beam microphysics is uh, uh, the best uh, approach uh, in the present, uh, I think. Theoretically, yes, but I guess um there must be aircraft data and other data in the cloud, hopefully, that suggests that you're, you're, you know, getting a, a you know, distributions that are broader and yeah, you know, I getting agree. aggregate yeah. uh, processes that the bulk are having difficulty doing. Yeah, uh, the spectral beam microphysics has many uncertainty, yeah. especially in the mixed phase processes. And uh, actually, we uh, compare to the aircraft measurement data and. Uh, the simulation result uh, to uh, the simulation result uh, would be constrained by the measurement data. Uh, so I mean, uh, to better database uh, that that is uh, uh, correspond to the me measurement result. Uh, yeah, we have uh, our efforts to do. Okay, I have uh, three quick questions. Uh -huh. The first one is, I'm curious if you saw anything related to the sensitivity these simulations will have to resolution. Because given that the vertical velocities are highly, the microphysics are highly dependent on the vertical velocities, and even more so when you're comparing shallow to deep cloud, and that on one kilometer resolution, it has been observed that the sizes and therefore the vertical velocity scales of convective elements are large, uh, they, they are sensitive to resolution requirements. The second one is um, how well constrained is, are, uh, is the assessment of your, bin, uh, of your spectral microphysics? 
because they're looking at one one location, the vertical distribution at one location, and what we saw from other from horizontal figures is that there's a lot of horizontal variability. So given small perturbations to initial conditions, how much would your results change? And third of all, if you saw um, any relationship between your microphysics and any big ones that would actually convince us to use the more expensive uh, spectral big microphysics. Uh, the first question is uh, so horizontal resolution. Uh, I we usually one kilometer resolution at the finest domain uh, uh, horizontal spacing. So actually, I I did not uh, conduct uh, some uh, sensitivity result, but uh, in, in this case. And uh, this figure at 21 UTC, the shallow boundary layer cloud is very patchy, but uh, this, this uh, vertical measurement results show the relatively continuous structure of the shallow boundary layer cloud in, in the measurement results. So probably this one, this difference is caused by the uh, coarse resolution to resolve the uh, shallow stratiform layer cloud. And uh, I, yeah, actually, I didn't, uh, sen uh, I, I didn't conduct a sensitivity result as for the uh, horizontal resolution, but uh, one kilometer is, I think, still not enough to the, uh, for uh, characteristic of the presentations uh, this uh, event. And uh, I think uh, one of the paper uh, by the Professor Landlord uh, at the CSU, uh, one pa the paper shows the sensitivity of the uh, some, uh, some uh, important uh, characteristic in the model to the horizontal sense, uh, horizontal grid spacing. So, and uh, up the last velocity is still it can be a uh, changed parameter uh, and uh, and large sensitivity of the uh, horizontal grid spacing. And the, uh, what is the second? Uh, the second is how the predictability of the problem, how well constrained it is given that you're only looking at one vertical column at one point. So if you look at the vicinity of points for one simulation or run several simulations with small perturbations to the boundary conditions in the outer model, in, in the outer parts of the model, would that change your analysis significantly? I, I mean, that's, that's, that's a question. It, the, the, the question is if you looked at that, it, is, is this problem well constrained? Or maybe some of the, that scattering may be due to you're not looking at a point which is which has actually the same qualitative characteristics of this deep, deep convective system uh, as opposed to moving somewhere else. Uh, actually, I didn't uh, check the point. Uh, so just uh, uh, th this one is uh, one uh, great column comparison. Mm -hmm. Uh, between the one Zen Sreda measurement and uh, as for the uh, comparison between the, uh, this possible decimeter measurement, uh, we sampled the uh, 20 kilometer square domain around the Amish TT site uh, in the simulation and that will be almost equivalent to the uh, this meter measurement. Uh, I didn't check the so if uh, different place we 
Need to be a few cups there. But there. This is just slightly uh, wide uh, phenomena uh, on this side, so. And uh, we'd like to so, focus on the uh, limited area ma microphysics data. And so I, I think uh, this should be some reasonable uh, comparison between the me measurement and the So they were just trying to see if the, of the results at that station were, were being reproduced, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, the the so thing is, how well constrained are they? Yeah, so that at this time, we don't know. So uh, let us thank Dr. Iguchi for such a nice talk.